You're listening to The Money Hour with your host, Tina Mitchell, on Alternative Talk, AM 1150. Now, back to the show with local mortgage and finance expert, Tina Mitchell. Welcome back to The Money Hour with your host and mortgage expert, Tina Mitchell, right here on 1150 AM KKNW, the Saturday, November 26th show, bringing in expert advice and inside knowledge on today's events in our local economy and how it can affect your money. If you're hearing my show at a different time or day, you are listening to a rebroadcast. You can call the show at 1-855-411-50 or go online to themoneyhour.com. Discuss anything that you'd like regarding your finances. Uh, more importantly, talk with any of the guests that I have in studio today. And right now, I've We've got uh, Frank and Lisa Savali. We're going to be talking with both of them uh, about little different uh, topics, but uh, both from the Cascade team, uh, husband and wife, partners. And Lisa, this is the first time I think I've had you and had a conversation with you in studio. I've been able to talk with Frank a couple times. So thanks for joining us. Thank you. And a little bit about uh, Lisa and Frank. Uh, Frank and Lisa are, again, with the Cascade team, business and commercial property, property management and residential sales and leasing. They specialize in business transfer sales, business valuations, commercial property, property management, residential sales, and provide full service property management services for residential, multifamily, and commercial properties. Lisa currently holds a managing broker's license for 20 years experience in the real estate industry. In addition, she holds a business broker specialist designation and business broker um, amenity Acronym. She belongs to the NWMLS, Washington Association of Rural Tours, National Association of Rural Tours, and previously has been a member of Women's Council of Rural Tours. As a formal par- paralegal, detailed, conducts, and negotiates are also her specialty. And a little bit about Frank. Frank is retired Air Force officer, university professor. He is a past president of two publicly traded companies and previously owned a retail franchise. So, lots of experience when it comes into the commercial arena. So Lisa, what does an investor look for when purchasing multifamily and investment properties? That's a good question. It depends on the investor. I have several investors. One will look for, um, we're we're all looking for cap rates and um, a good definition of the capitalization rate. Um, And I'm I'm just going to read this because it's it's easier that way. Uh But it's a measure used to compare different real estate investments. Although there are many valuations, a cap rate is often calculated as the ratio between the net operating income produced by an asset and the original capital cost, meaning the price paid to buy the asset, or alternatively, it's the current market value. Um, So what what that might mean is if I get a 10 cap rate, so um, that means the investor is going to be able to have that investment paid off within 10 years. So in this market right now, a 10 cap rate is amazing. So um, we haven't seen those in a while. We're looking um, for commercial loans. It has to be a minimum 4.5% cap rate in order to get the commercial loan. And that takes into consideration lots of things, not just the income and expenses. It takes Mm -hmm. into consideration the vacancy rate, which is 5%, the management fee, which even if you're going to self-manage the bank, is going to put that in there at 5%. Yes. Um, repairs and maintenance called R&M. They're going to use 500 per unit, $500 per unit. And they'll look at appraisal on that. So lots of involved. And that's where I come into play, just knowing these things, knowing mm-hmm. how the bank underwrites. And I'll do a worksheet just to get the investor ready to know they might be really um, never emotionally attached. It's always business. Yeah. Um, yeah. So totally different than buying a house. Yes. So, um, you know, we'll just take it from there with a worksheet and, and break it down. And if the cap looks good and the cash flow looks good and, it, and the asset can be grown, mm-hmm. that's one of my investors. He kind of likes to buy. I've had, I've seen him buy it maybe a three or four to percent cap rate, which is low, Uh but we'll do market analysis and look at where the property is. So for example, I just did a sixplex and um, unfortunately I had to be as the property manager, the bearer of bad news to raise the rents, um, but we raised 50%. Wow. Um, So his asset grew. You can go in and take a look at where it's at right now and know that it's not where it should be according to market and have a huge opportunity. You know, I'm glad you mentioned the emotional piece because it's completely different and it's a lot easier in the investment side because the numbers are what they are. So if you can release that emotional piece, and a lot of that is working with an expert that can say, here's what it is, here's exactly. what we can do and what we can't. Exactly. So Lisa, what about the due diligence process? So due diligence process is, um, it, it's 
it's I'm gonna I'm gonna bundle due diligence and feasibility together. So okay. if we're in a fourplex or less, we're gonna call it just due diligence or inspection. If we're in a fiveplex or more, then it's called feasibility and it's on a commercial contract. Um, so, but it really is the same thing. So we're gonna go in and we're gonna verify all the books and records and get copies of all the utilities, anything leased. Um, we are actually gonna have a physical inspection, and that's usually the first time the investor has actually gotten inside because okay. we don't want to go in and and bring buyers through before we have a, a a, a mutually agreed purchase contract. Mm-hmm. We just don't want to upset the tenants. Lots of times we don't want them to even know about it. Um, so once once we're ready to go, we give notice and, and we do the physical inspection and um, come back and take a look at, um, for example, um, I had one where it had all galvanized plumbing in a really old building. So that was something that the investor needed to factor in. Perfect. So Lisa, what about closing prorations, uh, assumptions of leases and what is involved and how and what escrow company can you do you use absolutely so um, there's only certain escrow companies that can do this okay um, there's uh, different ones I use for um, house sales um, but it's usually you have to ask them first do you handle multifamily or commercial and some of them will handle multifamily others will not handle commercial so I have a couple really good ones and you can also use attorney escrow um, but mainly the goal of the escrow agent is to and we help as the agents uh, and brokers get copies of all the leases Mm -hmm. Um, Those leases are going to transfer over. Um, We need to do prorations of rents, utilities, um, and, and, and of course, always, you know, taxes and insurance and those things. But... um, it, it's it's you need somebody that's really um, good with detail mm-hmm. and a lot of times on the closing statement I've seen where maybe we didn't get a rent for this or we got to go look at the deposits that are being held that are going to be transferred um, so it takes a real team um, of professionals to make sure it closes nicely yeah and it's kind of like on the financing side I have to say I don't do commercial um, financing as you know lending I do residential and I really believe if you're going to do commercial lending it really you want to focus and be an expert in that arena because it's totally different than residential residential. And I would imagine exactly the same on the escrow side as on the lending side. So Lisa, the Cascade Team Property Management Division, what are the the fees associated and how does that work with the service? Sure. So we have a portfolio of Probably, I think we're close to 60 properties right now. I took over as managing broker a couple years ago over property management. And so we have single family homes. And then Mm -hmm. I'm the only uh, portfolio manager that handles the multifamily right now. Okay. Um, So we have four property managers right now. For um, single family homes, it's 8% per month of the monthly rent as our fee. And then there's a leasing fee that's usually equal to one month's rent. So those are pretty standard fees. Um, When we roll, um, let's say that you have a house that you want to lease, and you also want me to manage it for you, then we'll usually give you some type of a discount because as you know, commissions are always negotiable. Yes. Um, So those are our fees, and we do have full service property management. Uh, Multifamily, um, the banks will only let us charge 5% on um, commercial. So, um, but we do have lots of units, so we do 5% on multifamily. Got it. And Lisa, I know that you're a role and branch manager of the new Snoqualmie office, so congratulations. And can you talk a little bit about that? Absolutely. So Frank and I just opened the Snoqualmie branch of the Cascade team in July. Congratulations. Thank you. And so it's to service the Snoqualmie Valley, but as you know, we go everywhere, um, especially with Frank and business and commercial. So Everything business commercial goes and light commercial, not big, you know, office complexes. That all comes into Frank and, of course, property management to me. Our office has grown, though. I have added one agent that I've known for years. She does only high end. I have another one that specializes in new construction. And then I have another one that specializes in the local area. Then we have our two business brokers. And then I'm specializing in multifamily. So Uh real diverse office, which is nice. It's small and and quaint and cute right off of downtown Snoqualmie. Well, congratulations again on the the new office. And you guys are doing some amazing things and and really can be that that whole um, um, what's the word I'm looking for when you got everything packed together to one, where you can take care of everything. We call that one stop shopping. That's exactly what I was trying to think of, Lisa. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and move over to your uh, your husband here and Frank. Have a, a conversation about you um, a little bit more on the coaching and the business value. I know you you um, work with the commercial side. But I know the two of you just got back from um, a trip a few weeks ago, and can you share a little bit about what was that trip? Well, we uh, we wanted to get away for a vacation, and 
and, and thought well this, deserving. Th- this, this would be a nice place to go. So we went over to the Domin- Dominican Republic, primarily for me to meet with some world-class coaches from uh, everywhere, uh, uh-huh. Australia, Europe, uh, all around the country, Canada. And it was just an amazing three or four days I spent with those guys. And, and what I was trying to do, my attempt to do was not only to learn more from them, but to partner with some of them to bring their expertise to this this area. Nice. Because what I see as a business broker is I see too many businesses selling for too little. Mm-hmm. And I see buyers buying businesses that they really don't know how to operate and run very well, and they fail very yeah. quickly. So if we can bring that coaching arm in early enough, uh, we can save those businesses, or at least uh, for the ones that are about to sell, bring more value to those businesses and make them worth more for the for the uh, seller. Yeah, I think it's so interesting in in uh, the coaching program with um, in buying and and in the commercial arena. I believe coaching for anything that we're doing is hiring experts that can help counsel you and uh, position you to maximize uh, your profit. So, what are you planning? What are the big plans for the new year? Well, we're, we're like I said, we're working with coaches from around the world, um, and we, we're doing a lot of referrals back and forth uh, in that regard. But as far as our local businesses, that we're we're focusing on working with businesses to bring their value up. That's okay. the key. We all want to increase value because no matter what your your profits are or what your sales and your expenses are, the the key factor is the business value when mm-hmm. you get ready to sell. What is that seller's discretionary income, and what is a multiple to bring uh, the number to that value. So that's what we're focused on. And we're focused on growing that arm this year. Got it. So, Frank, with the coaching techniques and um, the co- coaching business, is it for any business, um, even with real estate brokers and brokerages? Yeah, if it works for one business, it'll work for another. Got so it. it's just a matter of plugging in the right, the right uh, people and, and making it happen. Got it. So um, you believe in building value in business. <laughs> what exactly do you mean by that, Frank? Well, like I said, it's, it's a... a when we get the the total revenue minus the all the expenses, we come up with a number called the social discretionary earnings, and that's the number that I look at. It's, uh-huh. it's, a, it's basically the net profit plus the the uh, owner's salary and that sort of thing. We add that all together, then there's a multiple for every type of business that's that's been worked through since what twenty years, at least. I think they've been working on coming up with these different multiples. And we use those multiples uh, and multiply that times the SDE that gives us the Mm -hmm. value. We we price uh, businesses pretty much based on that number. It's about as good as, as, as you can come up with it without having to go out and do a bunch of comps. And we can do, do comps as well, like you do on houses. Sure. But we, yep. we, we lean toward the SDE multiple. So, Frank, in, in helping uh, businesses and business owners and the value that you're bringing, is it before the sale, after the sale, both? I'd love it if everyone was before the sale. Got it. You know, because the, the goal is to bring more value to the owner. Yes. Uh, however, we uh, I run up on these guys every day that just says, I want out. I want it sold. I want to be yeah. done. I, I, I'm done. And when that happens, you know, we're happy to oblige them and help them yeah. sell their business. But uh, the other side of that is when the new buyer comes in, it's great to work with that new buyer to build that business into something that he can be proud of and actually make a really nice living for him and his family. Yeah, and if they reach out to you early enough, I could imagine that the coaching and really helping to strategize, you might be able to save their business and get them back and motivated, excited. Yeah, it's, it, that, that's the key is getting in early enough. Uh, just talking to one of our, our coaches up in Canada this morning, and he's uh-huh. he's just uh, was just uh, contracted with a, a company starting four years in advance. He's going he's gonna to be working with these fo- folks for about a year, yeah. building a plan that they'll, they will take into the next three years and then put their business up for sale at the end of the fourth year. And it may seem like four years is a lot, but really I would imagine it wouldn't. When you're talking about a, a business and you know all of the, the things that are happening, um, really the, the preparation in uh, making that move and that transition, I would imagine would be very important. Um, how is it important is an exit strategy when considering the purchase of a small business or a startup business yeah, that's a that's the most important thing yeah um, in my mind the most important thing about any business plan is the exit strategy how do I get out of this if I've acquired a mess or if I if I've got something that's really really good how do I focus on growing it and selling at a different date and time yeah. so exit strategy in my mind is is the most critical part of a business plan 
Well, Frank, thank you so much for coming in, Lisa. It was a pleasure um, having yeah. you here as well. And it was a great show today. Uh, lots of information that we covered. And I look forward to having both of you back in studio again soon. Thank, thank you. you. Our pleasure. It's a pleasure. And this is your host and mortgage expert, Tina Mitchell, signing off for the day. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. I will look forward to talking with you same time, same place, right here at 1150 AM at KKNW.